Welcome home. It's Irish family history with curious news and notes at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish annals and books on every county in Ireland since 1978. Celebrating our fourth year of this broadcast, we welcome you as a patron or a member, and be sure to read our blog complete with links to click on from this podcast and search our master index for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get today's show on the road. Episode number 136. Among today's topics, O'Donnell is the Irish family of the day, and they're quite a family indeed. Number two, Irish Settlers in Kansas is the book of the month, and by the same author, The Callahans of Kansas. If you've got any Midwest roots, that might be some interesting reading. Number four, searching for Williams, Rourke, Donnelly, and McGill. Number five, The Flight of the Earls. That's going to be the video of the week. And, of course, that involves the uh, O'Donnell family quite a bit and the O'Neills. If you remember your history, and that would have been in the uh, uh, early 17th century, right after the Battle of Kinsale, Donegal is the county of the week. And did you know Ireland was once called Wolfland? Well, now it's time for the notes, notes for the week. That's where we talk about what's happening right here at the cafe and all the things that we do. Uh, you'll see that I've changed... Some of the segments on today's podcast, we're experimenting a little bit, and we're going to include a one-minute podcast uh, from one of our other broadcast series, and I may just do that every show. We'll see how it works out now. Uh, Today, I think we're going to have Peter give us uh, 60 seconds of something. Uh, Number two, we've added several new courses to our head school here. And one is about how to broadcast your family history search or create your own Irish family podcast. Students leave with their own podcast right in hand. And we help with the recording and the music and that sort of thing. And we could also play your recorded search online and get you some help for for your search if you're a graduate of the class. And uh, we're also working on one with uh, learn how to sing a song in Irish And also learn about those uh, old Irish ballads and have a little sing-along with those. Those are just three of the classes that we're offering now and putting together. Uh, Number three, our Irish County show is uh, recording at present, and we haven't played any of them yet. That's our next one, and I think that'll be, uh, well, it's really travel and a little bit of history thrown in there and a lot of Peter's experience. And uh, we've got Cork, Clary, Care, and Limerick done for starters We'll be launching it soon. Well, and now it is time for that one minute podcast. And that's going to be an expert, an excerpt from one of our seven podcast series now. Actually, we will have seven. And it's taken from the Irish Hedgerow History Podcast, one of our newest. And it's on immigration, where Peter discusses the immigration of the Irish, and in particular, his family lines that came to America, and the letters, and the jobs, and the occupations. Let's take a listen now and see what he has to say. Oh, absolutely. Uh, They came, and when they came, and I know the case, for instance, when some of my family came in, we came in in many, many different times, yet all coming from Ireland, even up to just a generation before me, but they came and found someone who was related to them before who happened to live in the city. So the new Irishman came and went to someone who was an established Irishman. 
and there were a great number of letters written back and forth. This was a great form of communication, and those letters were sent back to Ireland, and when it became easier to get letters back and forth, they would send money. And then those people would then take the money to pay for the passage to come to the United States. But they lived in the cities. And it wasn't until later in jobs, I know some people even where we live here, that they came in transportation. They came to be bus drivers and they came to work in the railroad or they came to work in the packing houses. Uh, Because those things, they were farmers, so they did know uh, cattle and they did know uh, how to deal with those kinds of things. And so... uh, They moved from the cities, but it was later. Originally, they came into the cities. Then they actually ran into some of the same problems in the cities because of disease, because of the thing, and they couldn't survive there. And then they decided to move out, and with land grants that were given by the government to help populate the West, and maybe even to uh, help move the Indians along. Well, thanks to Peter for that. I'm also on those shows. Peter and I are co-hosting that one, and... uh, His input is really interesting, and he's got a background that makes things connect that you wouldn't even believe in. Uh, Hey, next we've got coming up the Books of the Month, and there's going to be several of them. Uh, Some of it's local, and some of it's way back in Ireland. Uh, Here it comes in just a few seconds. Well, the first book we're going to take here, we're going to have four today. That's a little out of the ordinary. Hey, we might have five. Uh, Yes, we will have five. Number one, The Conquest of Ireland. I talked about that one before, but it fits in perfect today with the O'Donnell uh, family and uh, uh, all that had happened up in Ulster there with O'Neill and the Flight of the Earls and that whole 17th century uh, fiasco, you might say and the plantation in Ulster. So I've got a link on the blog to that book, and that's all about the plantation of Ulster and the bringing in of families from Scotland and England and a few other areas to uh, settle the lands that had been the Irish but that they theoretically lost in battle, but I don't think they ever gave up and uh, continued right on into modern times. But these books tell exactly how it happened, uh, who the individuals were, who the, who the people were that had the line, land, who took the land, what shape the land was in a few years after these people had settled it, and had they done what they had promised when they got title to the land, uh, theoretically through the king or the crown of England. And uh, this is the complete story, all the way from the planning stage to the implementation and the troubles and the legal things and the hearings and... Uh, Some of the, like the little rabbit warrens that they established, little things like that, some hobbies that the new settlers have. It's a four-book set, and that includes the Fall of Irish Chiefs and Clans and Pinner's Survey of Ireland, uh, Londonderry Lands and Families, and Names in the Irish Land Grants. Number two, The Families of County Donegal, Ireland, and that's the hardbound uh, book that's full of uh, Irish family histories that I put together, over a thousand for sure, and that's got entries on the names and coats of arms and place names, and uh, uh, it's more of a conventional book, and it's hardbound, and it's a good one. It's been around the longest. It's part of the Irish Families Project, as is the next book of the day, County Donegal Genealogy and Family History Notes, And that's the small little guide that's really set to help anybody trace their family in Donegal, regardless of what the name name is. We have uh, some family histories in it and uh, a lot of individuals named in certain areas, but it's more for just everybody who wants to do some serious research, research, and uh, it's an interesting book as well. Then next we have two books on Kansas. Uh, by Patricia Callahan Walkenhorst of Keepsake Books, uh, P.O. Box 1751, Blue Springs, Missouri, 64013. And that's Irish Settlers of Kansas and the Callahans of Kansas, uh, a family history. Those are two good ones. Hey, I should remind you, we do have the seven podcast uh, series coming up. Well, we've got six online now, I think, or, yeah, six. Ooh, and seven for the county uh, series, and then we're going to have eight with the Irish Language Fund. So, my gosh, we're going to have more more than I ever realized we could ever have. 
Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun, I'll tell you. And now it's time for what? It's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. And here are the Magnificent Seven for the day. Larry Curtis of Rydell, Georgia, your 1659 census shipped. Margaret Morgan of Park Falls, Wisconsin, your Book of Irish Family shipped. Mark Swan of Colorado Springs, your County Meath and Westmeath genealogy book shipped. Number four, Marion Drennan of St. Francisville, Louisiana, your County Antrim and Belfast book shipped. Lynette Ann Crosswell of Victoria, Australia, Welcome as a new member searching for Edward Johnson Williams, born around 1843 in Dublin, and wife Adelina Rourke, born 1847, County Tyrone. Number six, Rodney Donnelly of Newborough, Australia. Welcome as a new member searching for Donnelly and McGill in County Dublin, and Lamb and Martin in County Offaly. Number seven, Susan Craven of Enfield, New Hampshire. Your County Cork Genealogy and Family History book has shipped right along with our Families of County Cork book. So you've got a nice start on a really good library there. And uh, we hope that helps. If anybody can help on any of the searches I mentioned, just let me know and I'll pass the word on to our members or patrons. Now we're coming up to the Irish Family of the Day. Well, the Irish family name of the day is going to be O'Donnell, and that's a good one for sure. Uh, let me see. It's in honor of member Donald J. McCrory, searching for the O'Donnells of uh, Truro Castle, or Truro Castle, T-R-O-U-G-H. And, of course, there's several related spellings of the name. There's even confusion between McDonnell and O'Donnell. And that O'Donnell can have two N's in it, or one, or a double L, sometimes a single L. And sometimes names like O'Donnellan uh, get chopped off, just become O'Donnell or shortened to Donnell. Uh, so remember those vowels can change at any time, but it's the sound of the name that counts. Now we've got a lot of those from our uh, master guide to the various spellings of Irish family names, and I've got a link to that on the blog as well. Now if we take a quick look at the name, We'll see the McDonald's are of separate origins from the O'Donnell's, of course, originally. And some of those McDonald's are originally from Argyllshire in Scotland, and they settled in Ulster, that's the north of Ireland, in the 13th century. O'Donnell itself is one of the top 50 names in Ireland, and it's traditionally linked to County Donegal, where they were seated. The chieftains were installed at the Rock of the Dune near Letterkenny, and there are several distinguished men of the name if you look through Irish history, including Red Hugh O'Donnell, who rallied with O'Neill at the Battle of Kinsale, fled to France and died there, perhaps under suspicious circumstances. And you're also going to find an O'Donnell, part of the same family, was part of the flight of the Earls just subsequent to that Battle of Kinsale uh, that led to the... Uh, fostering of the Ulster, plant, Ulster plantation of all those settlers. And there's uh, also extra people, extra traditional families of the name in County Clare and Galway. And you've got some confusion for the name there. And I see more rep representations for McDonald in, in uh, County Clare. And O'Hart also gave us a listing of uh, Donnell, D-O-N-N-E-L-L, among the names of Huguenot origin coming in and settling uh, in Ireland, perhaps coming to England for sure, and a lot of those came on into Ireland. That's just one, that's a real slight chance there, but it has been listed. Uh, now, you're also going to see that in researching the old Herald's work, I was surprised to see that uh, one year in, in one work, it was uh, I saw the name McDonald listed, listed. Uh, with the coat of arms. It's very recognizable for the O'Donnell family. And the next book that I looked at that was several years later or prior, uh, you're going to see the very same coat of arms listed under the name of O'Donnell. So I don't really know exactly what was going on there. It could have been a mistake or an error of the Herald himself, or it could have been that uh, sometimes the family used O and sometimes it was uh, more... Uh, how shall we say, more uh, uh, beneficial to them to use the Mac. 
I'm not sure. It's going to take a lot of extra historical research to find out. Now, if we took a look at the Irish family of coat of arms from the Irish Book of Arms, we're going to find several names here. One, of course, is for the O'Donnell of Donegal, very well known. And the other two are for MacDonnell of Antrim and MacDonnell of Clare. And they're all in that book, so that's good to know. And sometimes you get a little clues on research if you find out who those leading families were and if you were related to them. Coming up later this episode, we're going to hear about the Irish lady that's the oldest woman in England. I wonder what her name is and how old she was. But now we're going to take just one more thing here. And that is the sources that we tied to the name today in our research. And since uh, O'Donnell is such a common name, uh, both of our Donegal genealogy books, of course, have that name in them. And uh, you're going to find several O'Donnell uh, individuals listed in Pinner's survey of Ireland, uh, since that was the north of Ireland. And you're going to find both uh, uh, in O'Donnell and names like that in the Land Grants book, and both Mackinac and Londonderry Lands and Families. And in the I Annals of Ireland, there's all kinds of O'Donnells in the Hebrides and Donegal and Clare and Cavan. That's a good resource. Now we come to another international session of our uh, podcast here. We're talking about the websites of the week. And these websites can come from all over the world. That's why I changed the music a little bit there. Uh, matter of fact, I've got a lot of good friends I've met that have some Spanish-Irish connections. And in particular, Cubano, Cubano-Irish connections. So that's interesting too. We'll talk more about that later. The websites of the week, I've got four of them. Number one, the history of the O'Donnell family, and that's at howsthecrack.com. Now I've got the link on the blog to that. Number two, the O'Donnell Clan Association homepage. I've got interest, interesting information there, and they used to have a newsletter, and now they're starting it up on the web, so it's going to continue the same duty. Number three, I've got the video of the week is the Flight of the Earls. Uh, that would be O'Neill, O'Donnell, and a lot of followers there. And uh, that's off of YouTube video, I believe, and it's a lecture. And uh, you might find out some interesting things on the family if you're an O'Neill or O'Donnell. And number four, the County Donegal Ireland genealogy page. And that has, uh, it has Donegal Town, I believe, and it might have uh, links to information on the whole county. So that's more of a general resource uh, for folks interested in County Donegal. And that's a beautiful land and... Uh, if you've ever been there, I'm sure you enjoyed it. Matt, last time we were up there, we stopped just before we got to Donegal, and we saw uh, Granuel's uh, castle there on, what was that, Clue Bay? I think it was. But And then we stayed, uh, we moved into that little town just before uh, Donegal, and I can't remember the name, the Westport County Mayo, I bet it was. Now we're up for our last segment. <laughs> Well, that's right. It's Curious News and Notes, biographical entries of 9,700 Irish people, the work of many distinguished historians dating back uh, to from, from several millenniums to the year 2002, and it's been called the most significant publication of the 21st century so far. Uh, we've got a good 90 years to go, so it might be beat. But they say this is the best one yet, and it's got all kinds of historical figures right up to today. And I bet that includes Brian Baru and St. Patrick, too. I'll have to look at that. Uh, number two, Old Moore's Almanac is known for its wild predictions, uh, but next year they're predicting a magnificent summer from June until August and the death of Osama bin Laden and a royal helicopter crash. Uh, but you know, the sales of suntan lotion have not yet risen to uh, rise for that occasion. I wonder if they believe it or not. Got that out of the Irish Times. Link to all of these are on my blog. Number three, Irish uh, centurion. Would it be an Irish centurion? 
I'm not sure. Uh, Peggy Carter was born in 1901, and now she is 108 years old and the oldest woman in Britain. Now, she was born originally in Tipperary, and she's fit and well today, and cooking is her favorite pastime. Her secret to a long life is be good to yourself and have fun. Plenty of it. Boy, that sounds like a nice formula to me. Uh, number four, the Boston Irish Film Festival is focusing on 1910 this year. They've got uh, Lad from Old Ireland, Rory O'Moore, You Remember Ellen, uh, and His Mother. Hmm, that's interesting. The Boston Irish Film Festival got a link on the blog. Number five, The Myth of Family Coats of Arms. That appeared on the web here, and... Uh, they say there's no such thing, and I understand that because, strictly speaking, there isn't. But the Chief Herald of Ireland put a little question mark on that, saying that Ireland was a little different from the rest of the world, and the clan held things in common uh, much more than anybody else did. So he was saying there just might be a way to uh, say that the, fam the family did hold that, and he, I tell you what, he, at least unofficially, he recognized that, right? So you got to do some research there, but... This opinion's on uh, on the blog. Got a link to it. That's from uh, Dick Eastman, and he's a ex expert genealogy and uh, analyst there. So that could be fun. Number six, Diddley Eye Magazine is launching. Uh, they're that really nice uh, Irish dancing site, and they've now got, they're going to have a little magazine and call it uh, uh, Diddley Eye Magazine with music, arts, culture, and travel. And number seven. After 34,000 years, the Irish wolf was wiped out in the 18th century, uh, partially because of a law passed by Cromwell or enforced wanting to clear out those areas that all those people were settling that the uh, uh, Irish used to lay claim to, and they didn't want those wolves out there giving them trouble. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America and on 2,000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away! Yeah.